It's official! The riding season is here. Days are nice and long and the weather is nice and warm, unless you live in Austin, Texas like I do, and in that case it's been some sort of secret monsoon season. Either way, if you've decided to take the plunge into everyone's favorite sport slash lifestyle slash drug addiction with your very first motorcycle, you're probably wondering what to do next. You've got your bike, you've got your gear, and you're looking to get out and experience the world on two wheels. To be honest, I'm a little bit jealous every time someone DMs me and says me they're getting their bike for the first time because pretty much every time is a new experience. However, if you're looking for some things to do on your motorcycle to either improve your skills or just get out and enjoy the experience of riding a motorcycle, then I've collected a list of 10 things you should do in your first year of riding. Nothing on this list is going to cost you a bunch of money, and everything is going to help you get started with all that life on two wheels has to offer. Before we take a look at all that though, one thing you're probably already doing is overpaying for your motorcycle insurance. Insurance is one of those things that everyone has to have, but you don't have to deal with bottom dollar dude in a trailer saying, yeah bro, if you crash, just give me a call and I'll fix you up kind of policies. With Progressive, you can get coverage starting as low as 79 bucks a year, which is literally nothing. If you're a gamer, that's the price of one video game and a headset to listen to some 10-year-old scream into your ear about he's so much better than you. Instead of being made fun of by children, you can get out riding your bike knowing that you're covered in case of an accident. You can even get gear and accessories coverage for your mods and protective equipment so you don't have to worry about paying to replace that all by yourself. We've had all the shop bikes at HQ covered by Progressive since before we started even giving them away, and both Spite and I use Progressive for our personal vehicles. Click the link down below and get yourself a free quote and see how much you can save. Thanks again to Progressive for sponsoring today's video. Now let's find out the 10 things you should do in your first year of riding. And the first thing you need to do in your first year of riding a motorcycle is modify your bike. Everyone does it, and in this case, it's perfectly acceptable to succumb to peer pressure. I promise we're not gonna make you jump off a bridge, don't worry. Modding your bike is the simplest way to make your bike feel unique and special and get yourself some wrenching time on your ride. Sure, you might be starting off on the same R3 as everyone else. Maybe you've decided to change the levers on the bike or get a new seat or a new windscreen or a new exhaust and suddenly your R3 stands out in the line of all the other beginner bikes out there. It's also a nice way to get your feet wet, wrenching on your motorcycle, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Some quick do's and don'ts for your first foray into modding a motorcycle. First, start small. You don't want to dive in with some crazy top-end cam adjustment or something like that if you don't have experience wrenching on a motorcycle. Second, don't spend a ton of money modifying your first bike. I see a lot of beginner riders saying that they're going to make some Ninja 400 into a hot rod bike with a full system exhaust and the top-end kit and a fancy airbox mod, and suddenly it's going to keep up with all the 600s. That's not going to happen. At that point, just get a new bike. Bikes are not like cars. You can't just modify them to make them faster. It's just easier to get another bike. Finally, keep your stock parts. If you're riding around on a brand new beginner bike, whatever mods you do are going to lower the value, so keeping your stock parts on hand can help you make a little extra money when you inevitably upgrade. Number two, find some friends to ride with or at least some other motorcyclists to hang out with. Let me drop this little pearl of wisdom on you squids free of charge. No one, and I mean no one, gives one sweet flying fudgesicle that you ride a motorcycle. <laughs> Yep, you can talk to your friends who don't ride, and they'll just give you the cool story, bro look, and change the subject, or hit you with a damn that's crazy. You're gonna wanna talk to someone about your bike, the rides you've gone on, get some advice for mods or maintenance and all that jazz, so you gotta find a group of riders to hang out with. It doesn't necessarily have to be people you ride with, because you know that myself personally, I'm not a huge fan of group riding, but hanging out and talking about bikes with a group of people can open you up to new opportunities. Maybe they just know some cool roads, or maybe they can show you a trick or two, or get you into a discipline in riding you may have not considered otherwise. If you're feeling social but you don't want to go outside, you can check out our Discord server by clicking the links down below and joining our community for the best motorcyclists on the internet. We've got boomers on Harley, small bike fetishists on 300s, and everything else in between. We've also got a meetup feature if you want to meet someone IRL. Number three, learn to do the basic maintenance on your bike. Motorcycles are not like cars where you've often better served by just taking to the dealer and having every single little thing fixed. I can't think of a single person aside from maybe a BMW dad who would take a motorcycle into a shop and have the chain cleaned. Instead, you need to learn how to just do that stuff. There's a whole bunch of resources online for fixing your bike up on your own, but if you're looking for some great videos on how to do basically anything on your bike, Ari Henning over on Revzilla has a whole series called The Shop Manual dedicated to how to work on your motorcycle. Things like cleaning and adjusting your chain, changing your oil and filter, bleeding your brake lines, or even replacing worn components like sprockets and brake pads are all things that you should learn how to do. If you've never turned a wrench before and you're a little bit nervous about breaking something, then hopefully you did thing number two and made some friends that can come help you out. Most of the time, riders are more than willing to help each other out, not to toot my own horn again, but we literally have an entire channel on the Discord server dedicated to fixing things up on motorcycles. Motorcycle maintenance is a lifelong skill that you'll need to pick up sooner rather than later, so you might as well just dive right in and learn it in your first year. 
Number four, take a trip on your motorcycle. One of the best things you can do in your first year of riding is to get out and take a longer trip and see something cool from your saddle. Now, I'm not talking long way around here, but I'm also not saying that you should just go to the next town over. You should find some destination near your area where you can spend a night and basically make a road trip out of it. If you're in the US looking for some cool places, check out what Spite made a video on the top 10 motorcycle destinations to go around all the country. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, yeah, you only have a 300cc, it's not capable of doing big highway miles, and I don't have the money to upgrade to a touring bike. This is a huge misconception. You don't actually need a special bike to do anything. I mean, look at the abuse we've put our Jixxer 250 through. Where there's a will, there's a way, and there's nothing like a road trip on two wheels. It is so different than going out there in a car. Again, you don't need to go across the country to see something cool from the saddle of your bike. But trust me on this one, you're not going to want to miss going on a trip on your bike. The next few things are all going to help your skills as a rider. I'm going to start off with number five. Take some sort of advanced skills course. Sometimes these are called bike bonding classes, but basically it's like the next level MSF course, where instead of being on some random rebel 250 from 30 years ago, you're riding your own motorcycle. Now, I'm not a huge proponent of the parking lot warrior stuff. Sorry, Dan Dan the Fireman. Love you, dude. I don't think that being able to perfectly execute a year turn within two parking spaces while not putting your foot down makes you a good rider and doesn't make you a bad rider either. But that being said, they're valuable skills to know how to do. It's also important to learn some emergency braking skills and advanced handling stuff on your own motorcycle so you can use it for the street. Also, motorcycling is a craft. It's a skill you're going to be working on and improving for the rest of your riding career. And there's a lots of different disciplines and things you can do with motorcycles, so you should at least get started and try to learn a little bit more in your first year as your brain is soaking up all that sweet, sweet knowledge. Number six, do your first track day. Ah yes, the very first track day. It is my moment to shine, time to simp publicly for riding a motorcycle around a racetrack. It's an experience that will stick with you for a long, long time. You get to experience what riding without a speed limit is like, how much farther your bike can lean over, there's no cops, there's no stop signs, there's no traffic, it is absolutely wonderful. And if you're a quick learner, you might be able to get your knee down on that very first day and post a picture of your scraped knee puck on Instagram. If you ride a motorcycle, you need to do a track day at some point, and the sooner, the better. You'll be able to ride fast in a safe and controlled environment, and most of the time for your first track day, you're riding with instructors who can help you show the ropes. If you're worried about price, like getting a suit, boots, gloves, a track motorcycle because you don't want to wreck your personal bike, don't be. Lots of organizations will rent you a suit for the first time and you're not going to drop your bike riding around on the track for the first time. It's pretty rare. Chances are on your first time you're not going to be anywhere close to the limit of traction, so just go out on your bike, have fun, and soak up the knowledge. Seriously. Go to attract it. Number seven, keeping with the theme of advancing your skills and broadening your horizons, ride as many different types of bikes as you can. If you've just gotten your first motorcycle, chances are you just got something that looked cool or something that you think you'd like to do, and that's fine. It's why I started an R3. It was a sweet looking sport bike, and I wanted to be a fast boy. But here's the thing. You don't know anything about what kind of riding you like to do, and that's okay. No one does when they start out. For the longest time, I thought that dirt bikes were dumb and ugly and all looked the same, but that's because I was a small-brained boy. I went out and tried off-road riding and I became the galaxy brain yam who speaketh to you now. There are so many disciplines of motorcycling from road racing to trail riding to flat track racing to long distance touring to motocross to trials riding and all kinds of stuff. Each one has their own challenges and techniques that you'll learn and understand and only after riding a bunch of different kinds of motorcycle you'll start to understand and appreciate all the different disciplines. Don't write off a discipline until you've tried riding it unless it's taking 560 pound BMWs off-road. That's just dumb. Number eight, pay off your motorcycle. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you how I have an economics degree and how you shouldn't finance your toys and stocks and all that, but I do think that if you're financing your first motorcycle, you should aim to have it paid off in a year. I know that can be a little tough if you're a college kid working at your local sub shop, but you should at least look to have as much paid off in one year as humanly possible. Why? Because you're probably not going to keep that first bike for much more than a year unless you want to turn it into a track bike or just keep it in the stable as an alternate bike. You'll eventually want to upgrade and if you're upside down and alone, you're not going to be able to sell your bike yourself or trade it into a dealership for money down and upgrade. If your monthly payment is around 150 you should really try to pay 300 down if you can swing it that way in your first year. You inevitably do want to upgrade. You can flip your bike the right way. Number nine, upgrade your gear. You've probably started out by watching one of our beginner gear list or maybe one from Fort9, but your beginner gear probably isn't the best one out there. Not that you need to be rolling around in an AGV carbon Pista GP in an airbag jacket, but if you started off with a $200 helmet, maybe you should look into one that's a little bit nicer later down the road or adding a pin lock or a cardo. Maybe you got a cheap jacket and you want something that's a little bit more breathable or waterproof. 
or your gloves aren't holding up all that well. You should plan to upgrade slowly your gear throughout your first year of riding or to get some nicer stuff. Don't go too crazy, but it's okay to spend a little bit more on upgraded gear. Number 10, start thinking about your next motorcycle. If you've done everything on this list and you're getting to the end of that first year of riding, then it might be time to start thinking about what your next motorcycle is going to be. Maybe you want something with a little more power, maybe you want something that's more comfortable to ride the office, or you just want a second bike to do hood rat stuff with your friends on. Whatever it is, you should be thinking about what that next bike might be. That's why I said go try track riding, go try a bunch of different bikes, make friends with other riders so you can better understand what you want out of motorcycling. Don't dive right into that upgrade either, take some time and marinate on it. Though don't forget that you're going to own a bunch of different bikes in your life, so not every single one of them is going to be your favorite. Sometimes you just need to buy the bike. Fact, a contronym is a word that's its own opposite. For example, if you seed the lawn, you add seeds, but if you seed a tomato, you remove them. Goodbye. Hey there, partner. You done made it to the end of this here Yammy Noob video, but I tell you what, there's another Yammy Noob video right over here waiting for you. Now, I know I'm real gracious like that, and I just do nice things for you, so why don't you take a look at this video, and you let me know what you think.